So good morning, everyone. We are from FSL Squared, and today we are going to present on our sub-theme of culture, which we have decided to focus on the topic of LGBTQ. My name is Francis, and these are my teammates, Simon, Kitty, Shannon, Sachi, and Mary. Culture, yeah. Culture is a set of common beliefs and values that are shared by a group of people and that put, it, put them together into a society. LGBTQ is a set of world in, in, international, internationals uh, and that stand for lesbian, gay, uh, bisexual, transgender, and uh, questioning. We chose to discuss LGBTQ as a cultural issue uh, because after our discussion, it is a recently emerged concept that brought challenges to all the cultures. In this presentation, we will introduce the diverse situations, including the challenges in different places and our expectations for future. I'm Mary, I'm from China. I will introduce LGBT in my country. In modern China, there is so far no clear law referring same gender relationship that causes potential sales to young generation. For example, a lot of students were infected by HIV in, 20, in 2010. In the following of five years, infections grew 35%. Many of them are infected because of homosexual behaviors. People feel worried when seeing it because in China's culture, there are people are shy to talk about sex with their children and the young gay may be not aware of they could be hurt from unprotected sex. They are shy to talk about it and they are shy to see doctor to, uh, for taking it. Some of people even don't have knowledge about AIDS. Now, more people are caring about LGBT, and the cheap HIV testing kits are placed in a wedding mach machine. It's more private for people to test kit and check, check by themselves. We know it will take a long way for China's same gender marriage legislation. Now, what we can do is to first help young people to avoid hurt. So, I'm from Indonesia, and currently in Indonesia, based on a survey done by 1,220 people, 87.6% still feel doubtful about LGBT, while 10.8% are supportive. From all the respondents, 81.5% explained that it was because LGBT did not align with their religious beliefs. As a deeply religious country, some people believe that the LGBT undermines the institution of marriage because it involves the relationship of two individuals without the capability of creating life. Moreover, some also feel that the LGBT is unnatural because God has created men and women with complementary capacities. Therefore, if we don't make use of it, it is sometimes considered as a revolution or a rejection of, cult of religion and of God. So, hence, due to strong religious roots and practices, LGBT in Indonesia is not as strongly recognized as in other countries. However, there are local organizations such as Arus Plangi, which is the Indonesian Federation of Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Communities that continue to campaign for equal rights for the LGBT people. I'm Shannon from Singapore, and I'm going to share with you Singapore's situation of LGBTQ now. While we can see this in the government's perspective, as well as the citizens' and social perspective, for the government's perspective, there are laws that indicate that same-sex same marriage and same-sex sexual activities are not allowed in Singapore, and this only applies to men, and it's free for women though. So we see that in Singapore, the government is not legalizing LGBTQ yet, but we see that, however, on the other hand, on the society level, Singaporean citizens are starting to be more open and more um, and starting to be more receptive towards the LGBTQ campaign. So as we can see from the event Pink Dot, we can see that the hashtag love is love, we see that through, uh, through events such as Pink Dot last year, 
over 20,000 local and permanent residents in Singapore attended this event. And last year, the government also banned foreign companies from funding this event, and hence all the all the money, all the all the all the money the organizers had were from local companies and startup, and a total of hundred. Um, an original target of only 140,000 was raised to over 250,000 um, dollars being raised for this Pink Dot event, and it just shows how much um, the Singapore society is starting to be more open towards the LGBTQ concept in Singapore. Let me. Let me introduce Japanese history about LGBTQ. There wasn't a prejudice against the LGBTQ until 16th century because, because there are already some LGBTQ people at the time. And, but when Christian missionary came to Japan, Japanese people knew the same-sex marriage was a taboo. Since then, some Japanese people began to have the prejudice against LGBTQ. In 2011, the government approved human rights for them. Japan, Japanese government has worked out this issue to make their lives better. Now in Japan, there are a lot of BL books and uh, celebrities who are LGBTQ and uh, and they are called new half. This uh, I think this is our new and unique culture. So we can say Japan has been a good country for LGBTQ. Hi guys, my name is Simon I'm from New Zealand and now I'm going to tell you guys some situations, current situations about LGBT in New Zealand. New Zealand is a fantastic country for LGBTQ people to travel and to move in. And Lonely Planet has rated New Zealand as one of the most inclusive and progressive gay country for people to live in. And just what makes us so gay friendly? <laughs> That's, that's because us are always a socially progressive country. And here are some evidence. The first one, in 1893, we are the first country on the world to give women rights to vote. And in 1995, we are also the first country in the world to have a transgender mayor whose name is Georgia Bayer. And in 1999, she became an official member in our parliament. And the last one, we have already legalized the homosexual marriage in 1993. So in conclusion, the majority of New Zealanders, we, are not, we will not give you a hold if you're LGBTQ people or not. That's because we are forward thinking, we are outgoing, we are really friendly to you. This is our cultural property. So our cultural property means that we are not going to give you a hold if you're LGBTQ people or not. Hi, I'm Kitty from Taiwan. Freedom and democracy is a really important culture in Taiwan. The definition of culture is a certain things being developed from time to time. In 1949, that's when our culture of freedom and democracy started developing. In 1949, the government made a legislation about restricting people's freedom of speech, freedom of publishing newspaper. However, after years passed, the government realized that it's really inappropriate for human rights. So in 1987, he changed the legislations, granting each of the residents freedom of speech, freedom of publishing newspapers. Since then, the people in Taiwan have courage to march on streets, express their thoughts, calling for respect. From 2003 to 2017, 15 parades were held by the LGBTQ people in Taiwan. The government also hold an internet poll, making sure that everyone can have their chance to express their thoughts and maintaining respect. We can see that the LGBTQ community culture may vary from country from countries, may be diverse from countries to countries, but what we can all do the same as unity is respect each other. Now we're going to discuss about some possible suggestions for culture future development. 
We divided into short term and long term. I'm going to talk about the events protecting. In Australia, Australian Human Rights Commission and the Mardi Gras Parade, which is the 39th parade that protects human rights. People People of LGBT community in Australia dance and sing on streets, using an easy and comfortable way of showing their uh, of showing their LGBT, not persuading and forcing people to support them, but asking for respect. The parade was based on UN's free and equal campaign. They want the society to know that we are all equal before love, and we should develop mutual respect. Hi guys, now I'm telling you guys something about the internet, about LGBT. And internet impacts almost every aspect of our daily lives, and especially to teenagers. But there's a problem that there are many LGBTQ teenagers have been bullied on the internet. As you guys can see from the stats in this table, 15% 15, 15, 15 of normal teenagers have been bullied on the internet, but the number for the LGBTQ people reached 42%. And the more remarkable one is that the last one, only 27 teenage, normal teenagers feel more unsafe on the internet than in the school. But this number reached 55% for LGBTQ people. But every coin has two sides. As we know, the internet can be harmful and really maybe aggressive to our teenagers, but we can also use it. Oh, sorry. We can also use it as a valuable resource. As we know, we can get much more information from the internet than in our daily lives. So we can. This, this is also an area that government can be involved, because we can fully use some really powerful social medias and some publications such as Instagram, such as Facebook, so that we can post and spread knowledge of respecting LGBT people as we can also respect all the other religions. That's what we can do on the internet to protect our teenagers. Yeah. So, on the long run, we can use education to teach children about kindness, love, and respect. Teaching a child is like teaching the next generation of leaders, thinkers, humans. By providing them with various role models within popular culture, we can teach them about diversity as a positive concept. Let's take, for example, in Taiwan. There was a male teacher who decided to change his gender into a female. <laughs> Then he decided to work at an all-boys school. At first, it didn't pan out really well with all of the students. Though some did respect him, others were quite skeptical because it was definitely unfamiliar for them. But as time passed, as they got to know the teacher better, his good personality, his hard work, his efforts, his knowledge, they come to realize that the teacher, he's human too, and he deserves the same amount of respect as everyone do. Now, let us imagine every LGBTQ teen learning about the fact that there is a range of sexual orientations and gender identities. That none is better or worse than the other, and whatever which one of them they are is fine, and it's normal. Such an affirmative message could help LGBTQ youth develop more positive attitudes about themselves. And this could also address or prevent internal tensions that many LGBT youth are currently experiencing. Hence, with education, let us continue to endeavor to make sure that every space, every school, every bar, every office, every street is safe. And not only for LGBTQ people, but for everyone. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about laws about human rights. Well, before I start, I will quote from the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, that all human beings have the right to be treated with dignity and respect, and such dignity and respect are afforded to people through the enjoyment of all human rights and are protected through the rule of law. 
every one of us here is a human, and we have the right to be treated with dignity and respect. And that's the same for people who are part of the LGBTQ community. They are humans just like us too. They have emotions, they have emotions too, and they might feel emotional if we treat us. And the way we treat them now, we are bullying them. We are not treating them with respect and the dignity that they have just like they are. We are human beings. We would want to be treated with respect, and that's how they would feel as well. We can treat our pets with care, love, concern, and respect. What about human beings? Us. We are all human beings, and we should be treated with respect and dignity. And hence, the enforcement on laws about human rights is so important, not only just for the LGBTQ community, but for every one of us here. Not to be bullied, but to be treated with respect. We need to find our position as young generation and global citizens. We talked about this issue together and share what is happening in our country and what each government did for LGBTQ. We understood our own history, culture, and agreed on suggestion for our Culture's future by sh by sharing our different countries and different culture as a unity. So we can say embracing unity and diversity is essential for us because we are living under diverse cultures. So working together and respecting each other is the best way to this, uh, make this world better and peaceful. Thank you.